sparkle you can see in their eyes, the excitement in their voice, the life you can just hear in their words. Next time you hear someone talking about their passion, pay attention to how they light up. Hi, I'm Naomi Liddell, and I'd like to talk about my own story, its ups and downs, and how it led me to find my passion in life. You might know me as the Naomi who works out. I'm almost always complaining about some swim set I did over the weekend or talking about my workout. I use exercise as some sort of meditation. If I'm upset, I'll go swim. Bad test score, I'll hammer out a cycling session early in the morning. Even taking long walks helps me think when I'm stressed. Now, I'm not saying this is the best anger management technique but I'm pretty sure by now you can see how closely intertwined athletics is with my life. It's been that way since I was a tiny girl, splashing in the pool, struggling to finish 50 meters of butterfly. Then, in freshman year, a big change happened. A few days before my swim finals, I got injured, keeping me from the pool for at least a month. I was devastated. The one thing I had used to to ground myself had been ripped away, and now I had no outlet for the negative thoughts I often had about myself and my body. I turned to a new thing to control, my food intake. Within that month away from the pool, I scrambled to restrict carbohydrates, fats, and as many calories as possible without doing any research. I began using the spin bike excessively in order to stay fit. This photo is the first of hundreds of post-cycling pictures. However, once I returned to the pool, I was struggling to keep up, my 100 meter freestyle time gaining 10 seconds. This of course affected my mental as well. I was so excited to return back to the pool, but all of a sudden I was weak, slow, and in my eyes, no longer of use to the team. I wondered if I deserved to exist. Nearly an, a year of aimless workouts passed. It was like a strange cycle. I'd work out to feel better about myself, but I never did. So I'd work out for longer and harder. Eventually, I found myself begging to use the fitness center's bike during my free period, join varsity swim after school, and then use the spin bike at home before dinner. At my worst, I was logging in 645 minutes per week of cycling alone and feeling guilty for not hitting 700. It was unbearable. I wondered if I deserved to exist. This is one of my workout planners that I used to keep in the notes of my, of my planner. SW means varsity practice. DR means dryland. SDR means a lifting workout and meet, of course, means a swim meet. All the other numbers are the minutes I spent hating myself on the exercise bike where I chiseled my existence away. Through the strange pipe dream I had given myself how exercise would save my life, I was failing to see how I was ruining it. I became too tired and too cold to engage with anyone, shutting myself off feeling as though I was worthless and didn't deserve anything. Simple acts like saying hello became too much energy for my body to spare. Notice how the only swimmer in this photo who's wearing a coat and long sun pants in the pool area? I was still freezing cold that entire day. Did you know that Constantly underfueling your body causes it to start saving energy wherever it can. My resting heart rate dropped to 35 beats per minute. My body refusing to spare calories on extra heartbeats. One year ago, during the same TEDx event, despite being fascinated with the topics, I found myself slipping in and out of consciousness as my body tried to conserve energy. It was like my entire world had become cold and lifeless. It was as if I didn't exist. Then coronavirus hit, forcing a change of environment. 
At this point, several people had told me that they were worried, and I'd even been to the hospital because my menstrual cycle had stopped working. The pool and gym were closed, so I wanted to improve myself in a different, socially distant way. That's when I began reading about nutrition, hoping to find some source that would help me feel like me again to re help regain my strength and athletic ability. My hyper-motivation for exercise was softened into a balance between study and workouts that were less strenuous. I pored over articles detailing the difference between monosaccharides and polysaccharides, refined versus unrefined sugars, and then tested my performance after having one or the other. Eventually, through trial and failure, I improved my pre- and post-workout nutrition and even saw positive benefits in my results, such as being able to bike an extra kilometer within the same amount of time. This imp improvement inspired me to educate myself further on having a healthy relationship with exercise and to regain my lost weight. I wanted to be the best I could be. The choice to actively study the science behind sports was one of the best choices I have ever made in my life. My once grey world was now aflame with all the colours of passion to learn, to improve, to come back to school better than ever. I carried my passion for sports science into school when the school year started, allowing me to gain an unlikely favourite subject, biology. Everything I had studied on my own now falls into place like puzzle pieces linked together by the concepts we learn in class. For example, I had heard the term lactic acid being thrown around in practice, but I finally learned in class that it's a byproduct of our bodies attempting to create energy without adequate oxygen levels. I had never felt a particular draw to any class before, but every time I made a connection between something I had previously studied with a new concept from class, I felt like I was rediscovering a reason to exist again. So what am I seeing here after all this? Passion is a driving force behind all meaningful action, and it is a powerful tool. Even when I thought I would be stuck in a body too weak to swim again, I, it was the passion about learning that brought me back to life. But I wouldn't have been able to recover without the first step of trying. Because I swallowed the anxiety to trying something new and took the plunge, I am giving this speech right now. In no way am I prescribing working out or studying as a way to fix an issue in your life. Instead, I am simply saying how trying something new led me to find a passion, giving me something to live for again. It gave me the motivation to wake up in the morning once more and actually enjoy the day not just exist. I know it's incredibly difficult to just go out and find something that you're passionate about, but it's more important to just be willing to try something new. Who knows? It might become something more important to you than you ever thought it would be. I want you to think about something that you're interested in, but haven't tried yet. Do you have it in your mind? It's so important to take the plunge in trying something new. Next time you can, I want you to spend some time just focusing on that interest. Give it a chance. All in all, passion was the tool that allowed me to stand up again and keep living. And I want you to find yours and let it bring a spark to your life.